I can never split Moscow and Sprinter. Sprinter was visually the best, and Sprinter was. I, I never rode arse like how he would just attack a fence, leave the ground, touch down the far side. What he did to Saison Europe, and Saison Europe was a very, very good arse, and he beat him 20 minutes. Are you teetotal as well? No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you tell me what you witnessed. Oh, listen, I can remember going to America to ride and Tommy Carberry and Christy Mellerick were so drunk they were holding each other up in the middle of the dance hall like two stags that had just locked horns. <laughs> and it was completely alien to me. To, why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> You know, the Andy Turnell, Jeff King and Johnny Hay, they'd stop in the pub on the way to the races. And you know, we you drive past and I'd be, you know, I'd Fred with me, you'd see the car still in the car park there, some pub on the way to Ascot, and then you'd be getting trains next to him and Terry Biddlecombe he'd sink yeah. a beer. And you, it was just an it was, it was a culture just, up, wasn't it? What? That's how it was. I mean, everybody did it. So I'd have grown up listening to those stories and I suppose the first half of my career, there was more of a drinking culture. I am Paddy with Paul Carberry, and uh, I was probably his apprentice through my late teens and early twenties. Yeah, yeah. And like that, I did you need you straight? I didn't have a big job. Um, you know, Norman Williams, Jason Tidley, Brad coming to Ireland. The money wouldn't be socialising as much, but it was good fun. Conor Dwyer. Do you remember the windy day in 2008, I think it was? Well, all the, yeah, all the, yeah, all the tents blew over. The yeah. Wednesday was called off. Yeah, and that's right, yeah. loaded up all the race on the tourist, but Wednesday lunchtime was, she lunched in a couple of glasses, it seemed okay, but before I knew it, it was Thursday morning, and I'm out running around chatting, so it was a few minutes. <laughs> even now, I go to bed at 10 o'clock. If I woke up, and I, I, I couldn't even contemplate waking up and, thinking, God, I don't feel very good. I mean, just, I just couldn't handle it. And it's different now, and it's been different for the last probably 10 years, but all sports, golf, rugby, everything has become more professional in that sense. Fitness, and jockey's the same, that fitter, more emphasis on nutrition, well-being, and jockey's riding for longer. And it probably, the, the latter 10 years of my career, a steadier lifestyle probably prolonged gave me the chance to call until I was 40. So Barry, when we were discussing jockeys right there in the mornings, got round to talking about you, I said there's two races, Riverside Theatre, remember you winning on him absolutely vividly, and also putting a sprint to Sacra in the middle of the race in Kempton. I said that is when you're good at your job and you've got the balls to back it up. Big shout, isn't it? It is, neither horse for travel. Every time I gave Riverside Theatre a kick and a squeeze, I got a little bit. The sprinter who'd normally be pulling your arms out wasn't travelling. And any little squeeze, there was no response. So I, I knew if I persisted, this could only be negative. Yeah. But I also knew that by coming back in, I could pull him up. I come back in and meet Nicky. And there's no question asked. He knew that I would be looking after his horse. And that's all that mattered to him. And it's... That's instinct though, that's, that's growing up with horses and that's the care that you have for them because it's, it's, it's not winning at all costs. You've got the two mile champion chase, which for a jockey, it's, it's a race. I've never ever, ever won it. Um, I remember Crisp winning it one year. Chris who to me put up the best performance ever in the Grand National when he was given £23 for Red Rum. And he he won the two mile champion chase, 20 wickets. He was the most unbelievable jumper, galloper. Great. He was like uh, Duvan, he was 17 hands, great big winner on him. Um, just a relentless galloper. Devour fences. Yeah, ab absolutely. But if you had to put all yours together, who is he? So all three of your. Four. So I had two on Sprinter and I had one each. But they're only three horses. 
No, one each Moscow, Finians, and Big Zeb, and then two in Sprinter side five. Oh, so, so, oh, right, okay. Um, who Does one stand out? I can never split Moscow and Sprinter. Sprinter was visually the best, and Sprinter was. I, I never rode ours. Like, how he would just attack a fence, leaves the ground, touch down the far side. What he did to Says in Europe, and Says in Europe was a very, very good horse. They beat him 20 minutes. That was one of the races that does stick in your mind. It was extraordinary. He's scary how good he was, but Moscow, I can I can, I can, can never underplay Moscow because he went four full season on, unbeaten. He would beat a horse rate at 150 by two lengths with his ear pricked, and he'd beat a Zertium close to 180 two lengths ear pricked and he won every race in his 10 year old season but to go four years unbeaten that takes a very special horse but this year we quality this year Ascot that was brilliant Shishkin and Nargamin yes round two and do you know what it was one of those races I watched it and there was no way that I thought Shiskin was going to win until he went past the post. Even from the last, I thought there's no way he's going to beat the source. Did you think he was going to win? Shiskin? I thought an argument looked the winner. And I was sitting there all watching it. My wife Paula. And I, I had this nervous excitement. Because I'm only new to being a spectator. It's just it's nearly two years since. Yeah, yeah. And I, this was the big match. And I had this nervous excitement. And it was brilliant. Um, that I haven't probably experienced since I was a kid. Um, but I thought I know I'd up to winner. But I said to my Paul as they turned in, I said, she's just not beat. She's not beat. I could see Paul didn't have an awful lot in hand. I thought I know I'd ran with the chalk out through the middle part. And it, it just took from his finish. I think if they can control that through the middle part, which would be very difficult to do in such a good race and competitive race. But I think that's where it was lost on the day. But I think Shishkin's going to be better suited by Cheltenham than one left-handed. But the Laird, the thing that, that really has me scratching my head then was recently when Willie Wollens said how he hasn't asked Paul yet which horse he wants to ride an argument or a Shaq and Law. Because Willie says for him it would be Shaq and Law every day. Really? So that puts the cat <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that um, Shiskin isn't just a little bit like Moscow Flyer and just does enough and uh, maybe was completely wound up, but I doubt it. Nicky's got, a, well, that's as has Willie, got a knack of just getting horses ready for the day to do. I'd, I'd agree with you. I'd agree with you on the, the Shiskin Moscow comparison. He, um, I mean, it's extraordinary how many good horses Nicky's had to his hands. Two miners, especially champion yeah. hurdles, champion chases. So, uh, the Ballymore. Um, it's all a bit up in the air now, still, isn't it? Willie has got the supreme options for Sir Gerhard. Dice at Dynamo, who he is well, said recently, he's not, he has to say where he's going to go, and, and we all kind of thought how he was keen over two miles, that that's where he'd go, but he said Paul thinks he'd be able to settle him behind the horse. So, do you think he jumps well enough? No, he's not dying, I I do. Yeah, so Gerhard, I'd question, but a little bit like Simon C. I I think he'd be better over a trip. I think he'd be better with a lead. For me, and he's the obvious one, he's a favourite at the minute, Sir Gerhard. But if Sir Gerhard goes here, for me, he's the one. I just think that little bit of experience he had last year, I like I like him as well, so I just think he, I, I just think he looks a little bit more assured over the hurdles than anything else that I've seen. And his course form. And of course, the course form. So we've been talking about horses and how they jump. Braves man's game has been as good as I've seen this year. From day, from day one, and every time I watch him ride, run, I think, do you know what, I'd love to have a sit on him. Head down, and he's yeah. just always in control. Very natural, and measured, but long and short. He's, he's so good, and Harry Compton on the last day, he winked the cross fence in, in Newbury. When he went down, and he went very long before last, and Harry was so good. 
and he's stuck in a shower and big gulp. Now, he, it's the first resemblance of a mistake he made. It was brilliant to do it, get away with it, and he would have learned from it too. Um, so we got Brave Man's game. We got that horse that was disappointing behind him at Kempton that yeah, um, Lucinda I, trains. Do you like might, him? I like him. I like him a lot. Okay, but the soft might suit him. I, I, do you know, he blew me away in Newbury Mode when he won early in the season. I thought that was a unbelievable performance. And he beats Brave Man's game as an novice harder in the yeah. Sefton in entry. Brave Man's game was well beaten by uh, Bob Allington last just valley board. So Brave Man's game is a brilliant jumper. But he has a ceiling. Yeah, yeah. I know basket. I agree with you. Yeah. I just a high senior I said he has beaten you can argue that Brave Man's game um may have may have been feeling the effects of Cheltenham and maybe it was. I, I don't think a high senior turned up in Kempton. I thought it was very good in the strain in Newbury. You still have the possibility of Gallup and the Shump is there. I know Bob Allen just committed for the Turners but you never know would one of those turn up what would that mean I think I think it's one of those races where the English have got half a chance of just nicking it even if Gallup and the Champ turned up maybe not if he turned up <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go through Barford are we we're going through Burford now. It's a pretty little town. Lovely town. Any stories about Burford? The only story I've got to tell you about Burford is that I only ever took my mum racing once because she wanted to stop and have a cream tea in the little tea room just up the side here. And this was... Um, I don't think you'd even go this way to Worcester anymore, but in the day. So, John, so, we've, so, we've had a little bit stop. Yeah, we have. <laughs> have you thought about your selections for Wednesday? Well, probably similar to you, really. I like Segura only for the fact that he ran well last year, and I think I like him. He looks pretty assured jumping. I would agree with just Segura be the one if, if he goes here. But he has mentioned Dice Arvado. I think it, it, for me, either of us, the, the, the Ballymore of us are going to be. Whichever he decides to send here, it's going to be hard to beat. And for the, the Brown Advisory? Um, I'm going to go with um, Lucinda Russell's horse. Yeah, I'd be with John I, Senor. Um, if, he, if he turns up in the form he's in the Newbury, he was brilliant by the beat last time. But he, he was performing in Camden at Christmas. Um, and Shiskin, as I said, he's just. It's very similar to um, what you were saying about Moscow Flyer. I'm just going to stick with him until he gets beaten. I thought he was absolutely down and out to Ascot, and he's still good enough to get back, so I'm going to stay with him. I would agree with you, Shishkin. He will hold form with an argument, but I do have to take on board a Willie says Shackle for spot. He's going to train him a little bit differently. He could be valuable to a pause just yeah, could be right. so short. And I just started to just shorten the reins and grab hold of him as we went past the winning post. And I, I came back in, because there's no cameras or anything, he said, how did it run? I said, it ran really well. I said, but I said, I thought we had another two furlongs to run. I said, 